Hello and welcome to another episode of the Omnia, Omnia Performance, Performance Podcast. Podcast. That oh. was quite smooth. There we go. It's only taken us 27 roughly episodes. But here we are. Thank you to those of you that are tuning in again. And if you're tuning in for the first time, please do make sure to hit the follow or subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on and do rate or review the show on whatever platform you are listening on. <laughs> Who saw that coming, eh? Thank you very much. We do really appreciate it. As sarcastic and strange as we can be on these things, we do genuinely really appreciate it. And we are doing this to try and entertain you as well as just show a little bit more about what goes on on a daily basis and the strange conversations we have about all things, in this case, performance. Today, yeah, yeah. we're going to cover 10 habits that have leveled up our performance. And Johnny is going to start by talking about booze. Mm, yeah. So this should be a five minute uh, conversation, but could be a Four hour conversation, depending what you want me to well, say. I know about what my booze. preference is, so <laughs> let's, let's stick with part A. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, so so we were chatting beforehand. This is this has been kind of fun setting this one up in a certain sense because we we're kind of trying to list out, weren't we, what what it is that uh, has has leveled up our game, what's changed our our overall daily existence, I suppose, for the better in terms of. Um, which is translated to training, I think, is the key point here. Well, not just yeah. training. I think a lot of these do feed back. Yeah, you're right. You're right, because that's that's the kind of crux of it, really, for this. But it, it, it sort of feeds into everything, doesn't it? Which is yeah. kind of, yeah. this is the fun part of the conversation. It's like, and, and the other effect has been, is something that kind of feeds into all these. But for me, uh, booze, uh, it's an obvious one when you think about it, but uh, knocking the amount of uh, a drink I took in and take in down has made an obvious, a, a sort of a... a Gen a very, very good impact on performance. Now, you'd think on the face of it, well, duh, that's, that's bloody obvious, isn't it? Yeah. But what we're not talking about is me saying, oh, maybe six bottles of whiskey a night or, or whatever might have been the practice in the late 90s, early 2000s isn't so good for me. I've already done that journey. It's just enjoying a pint. So I do enjoy a pint. Everybody knows that. I like a, I like a Guinness or six. And, uh, and it's easy to get into a habit I suppose for, for a lot of people, like a glass of red wine or a couple of glasses is, is a similar thing. So for me, it's just a few pints of Guinness or whatever. And it's easy to get into that habit where you think, um, well, a couple of pints isn't a problem or two or three pints isn't a problem because I'm a big guy and I can take that. And I've been doing it for years and all that kind of stuff. But I'm trying to think of the timeline, really. It's not been long where I've said, listen, I'm going to I'm going to bump that back to zero uh, during five to six days a week or even actually for me the habit has now become not drinking anything at all for months on end and then yeah. just enjoying a few drinks uh in uh, sort of uh you know a setting that warrants it i think that's, is my that's right it, yeah. yeah that's right and, and it's been it's been fun to do actually it's been a kind of a an experiment a very odd one for me because it's been a very standard habit for me but the real obvious uh, performance benefit has been that I am much more awake, I'm much more alert, I'm much more capable, there's more energy, all the things that you think you would get from it, I got from it. Um, but the things that I thought I would lose from it, which is what stopped me doing it in the first place, hasn't been a problem at all. Because I'm no different, you know, a couple of pints isn't going to, suddenly I, I relax to be myself, I'm not even different when I've had a pint anyway, so it's, it's not, it's just pure habit. I, I used to smoke years and years ago and giving that up I remember wondering, like everybody did, what, what am I going to do with my hands? You know, it's that kind of... Yeah, you, you and I fill the void. Yeah, yeah that's right. And, and so I had that uh, and wasn't quite as able to, to pinpoint what it was I thought I was going to lose. Um, but, uh, you know, it's amounted to nothing. Uh, and, and the gain's been extraordinary, really. So two or three pints that I thought weren't affecting me really were. And I think um, Ashley had pointed out that it wasn't just the two or three pints. It was the... Um, the time that that took, the decompression time, while I'm decompressing now, I'm relaxing with a couple of pints, um, means that I might think, well, I'll finish this particular pint or I'll have one more before I go to bed. But I don't down pints, you know, I'm not a, 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 a rugger bugger <laughs> where I'm that, smashing it back yes. or whatever. You know, I'm Very just... commonly uh, used term, yes. <laughs> I'm just enjoying a pint. So, you know, you're talking about 30, 40 minutes. That's 30, 40 minutes before I've gone to my bed where I could have just gone and... You know, it's so, not just the pint itself, it's the habitual change that comes with the pint, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, and, and there's so much... Uh, uh, so kicking off with this is pretty, pretty useful for me because I am in a position now... Uh, a good bit older than you, a good bit further down down the line, and things like that, and, and still several more pints consumed. <laughs> yes, the total so, tally is the higher. total tally is extraordinary, but um, still willing to learn and still willing to find out things that make me go, oh, you know, I didn't I didn't realise that was quite such a big impact. Not that you know, it's probably worth underlining. 
you know, I'm not I'm not criticizing anybody who wants to have a couple yeah, we're of not pints. demonizing it in any not way at, at all. all. And, and we do see within anything that we've done is that, you know, you kind of want to make space for things like that in your, in your I'm process. Gonna, I'm going to have 12 pints this weekend. Yeah. I've well, got seven stolen. You've counted, counted them out now. They're already lined up. Uh, 12, 12 minimum. 12 minimum. <laughs> anything beyond that is reckless. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, because 12 is perfectly reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went out the weekend, Ashley and I, for the first time in ages and thought, shall we, shall we? And then eventually came to that point where we're like, let's just relax and have a couple of drinks together. It's not something we've done for ages without the children. And we really enjoyed it. We also didn't enjoy the inevitable uh, hangover, but we kind of factored it in. And, I and think it's the hab habitual stuff that goes with that as well. That's right. You're yeah. a little bit worn out. You're like, oh, I'm just going to I'm just gonna get breakfast and prep rather than have a, yeah, have a no, porridge. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then before real you know it, you're spiraling. Things, yeah, from a, real simple things from a parenting perspective as well is that, you know, any, anybody who says like a, a heavy drink doesn't affect their parenting skills is, is, is telling themselves, I would think, a few, a few porky pies because you don't have the same amount of patience. Without kids, you know that you're grumpy or you're a bit fit or you want to just pull the covers over your eyes and watch shit TV or whatever yeah. you want to do. But, you know, so all those things then, and I think we'll come to that with, all, with, with, with this kind of full list, yeah. is that the knock-on effect of that one habit change and you know, the positive effects of that seem to feed into a lot of things, which again, might seem obvious, but the experience it, or experiencing it has been kind of fun because you know, yeah, I, feel, yeah. I, don't, I don't consider myself a heavy drinker in any sense anymore, but now I don't even consider myself much of a drinker. It's just when I have a drink, I like a drink and, and it's about as simple as that rather than it being a, a daily routine and it really has changed things for, for the better in a lot of ways. As you said, there's a thread of DNA that runs through all of this, which is the small impact of these individual habits stack up over time. And then the broader holistic benefit context that you can create for yourself is what then becomes beneficial overall. So yeah, like, bottom line, sure. based on what you just said, and I completely agree from my personal point of view is I have just completely vetoed any midweek drinks whatsoever. Yeah. And I've replaced them with alcohol free beers because it's not a straight swap because they're obviously a different product and that the alcohol is missing. So whilst it tastes like beer, it, it doesn't serve the same purposes as a beer to some people in some sense. But the ceremony of, oh, I'd love a cold beer. So do you, do you find that then? Do you it find... scratches the itch. Yeah, for me. yeah, yeah it does. You've yeah. said that before. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 I know um, you've tried and it hasn't necessarily worked for you, but well, you, you, you took them to the park and tried to fill that setting. I've tried that as well and that didn't work for me. But the, 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 the mid-week mid um, mid filling that, oh, I'd love a pint whilst I'm cooking, that does the job. And then once I've had one, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I want another one. I'll maybe go back to it and try it again because there are times where I think, it, it might, yeah, like you say, scratch the itch. Like I said earlier on, that kind of what do you do with your fingers, what do you do with your hands now that you stop smoking? It took a while uh, for that not to be a thing that you thought about. Whereas, um, you know, I have, well, funny enough, I've replaced the sit down drink at night with a, a, a cup of hot milk and, and a. You're getting old, yeah, it's, it's not quite Horlicks, but we're pushing towards it, aren't we? Uh, a, cup Coco. Of, a, a cup of hot milk and some. some casein uh, or, or something like that, something that kind of actually helps my training yeah. as well. But now that I've got that habit, it's very different. But that's not to say that, that the, you know, I'm quite interested in that non-alcoholic kind of swap out. So I think it's... it's Cooking's a good example, actually. Yeah, yeah that's right. I cook a lot, so it's, it's for, having a weekend. For me, it's, um, the, the, the real summary here is be aware and don't be ignorant to the reality of what booze does to us. Don't demonize it. We don't demonize it in any no, sense. Not at all. No, no I but, still like a bit of goodness. <laughs> be, be aware of the implications and try and factor that in in terms of the rest of the rest of your week, in terms of your yeah. workload productivity. If you're having four or five pints after work every Thursday, you should probably try and front load a lot of your week ahead of the Friday because even though you might think you feel fine, cognitively you'll have slept worse, you'll be slower, your reactions will be slower, and, and then going yeah. into the weekend it'll catch up with you. So I'll say that before we carry on from this one, I know we spent a lot of time on it, but um, the sleep thing has been huge. Yeah. Again, I didn't think, that, no, I know that I understand the physiology of it as, as well, but I kind of got to a point where I'm like, well, I mean, I'm used to it. It doesn't affect me. It, it's not a problem. Um, but it was, you know, the, the, the sleep difference is huge. I think that there's plenty of science to say if you've had enough drink to affect yourself in, in certain ways, that sleep's affected, your REMs is, uh, affected, the deep sleep process is yep. affected. And I hadn't thought that was the case, but... Once I've gotten past that kind of habitual stuff, I'm sleeping a hell of a lot deeper. Yeah. You know, so and 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 then I'm recovering better, et cetera, et cetera. So another brilliant knock on. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But don't be afraid to work in social occasions where you do get it wrong, as I will this weekend. But the recovery that I know that will be impacted for the following four or five days means that I will better manage my training schedule around the times of the day where I'm not feeling as groggy. I'll probably get a little bit more sleep, go to bed a bit earlier, which means I need to manage my workload. So I'm really considering the broader context around a big social event. And whilst you might think, oh, that sounds overly analytical and boring, Fergus. No, it's in fact allowing me to be very not boring 
Apologies if I see anyone on Saturday that disagrees. And thinks, <laughs> Get out of my face, you are not just bastard. Boring guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it doesn't take the fun away from it. It allows me to then not punish myself when I feel terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because if I'm not being productive, I'll be like, oh, what are you doing? Just get on with it. When in reality, it's because of the booze. So if I acknowledge that and then yeah, move, you, move forwards with it. Which you'd already planned in, so yeah, you expected yeah, yeah. to feel terrible. So yeah, it, yeah. it just means that the, the inner voice, it helps me better manage that. Anyway, that's number one. So if we give that much time to each one, this is not going to be a short and sharp podcast as planned. But moving on to number two, which is something that I'm a huge advocate for. And actually, Ben Francis said in one of his recent videos that one of the big things he credits his entrepreneurial routine and success to is getting up at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. So for me, that is pretty consistently five. But if I know that I'm in a period of time where I'm extremely stressed, I'll stretch that out to six and just make that week a little bit um, more consistent. And I sort of treat it within a week cycle. So for me, that means that whenever I need more sleep or I need additional recovery, I go to bed earlier not get up later because I feel most productive the first couple of hours in the morning. That's not to say the same for everybody, but the, you know, when you, you know, when you wake up naturally before your alarm, you think, Oh, I feel, I feel quite awake, yeah. but I'll go back to sleep before my alarm. And then when you wake up, when your alarm actually goes off, you're like, Oh no, yeah, yeah. long haul flight. <laughs> Just, Oh, I've had 15 drinks. What's going on? Oh, this is terrible. I want to stay in bed. That's yeah. because you've kind of gone against the natural, natural biological clock that we're working against. So, if you can consistently get your wake-up time down, don't lie in on a Saturday, don't lie in on a Sunday, use that time to, even if it's, Sunday's a good example for me because I do kind of still deep down resent the fact that I make myself get up early on a Sunday. So I use that time to sort of get ahead of the day with a bit of cleaning, loading the dishwasher, getting my laundry ready to go, all that sort of thing because it means when Sunday actually starts, I feel like I've really got ahead and I can truly unwind rather feel feeling like I need to get loads of stuff done before the week actually begins mm. and the cadence resets. So for me, it's getting up at the same time every day and acknowledging that our circadian rhythm exists because it does. Nobody's going to be able to dispute that, I am afraid. So it's, it's acknowledging that you can work within those parameters and then better understanding what the best way to make that work for you is. Might not be 5 a.m., might not be 6 a.m., you might work night shifts, but it's understanding what works best and then how you can stick to that to get the most out of that timeline and consistent pattern can i ask then just because we lived in very different circumstances in the certain because we've I've got the kids and, and all that kind of stuff is your wake-up time makes sense the, the whole thing makes sense to me I, i'd agree with it entirely but what about your going to bed time do you have a specific going to bed time then i mean it's, it stands to reason that you would but i'm not you haven't mentioned it i do but there are more often circumstances that might get in the way of that than there are the other way around. Yeah. Because occasionally I have a flight where I need to get up at four or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But with the bedtime, for example, great example last night, I was in the office until about half 10 and then I was picking Erin up from her sister's graduation and then drove her home. So I actually got to bed about midnight. And so I've only had five hours sleep today. So I feel a bit worn out, but mm. that means that tonight I'll be in bed by nine. Well, that, that was where I was going with the question. So, so it, it's, I, I, but within a 48 hour period, I'll, I'll, I'll almost view it as if I'm really, really under indexed one day, then I'll really over index the next yeah, night. Yeah. Will, but, will you correct that? Yeah. I, think the, the, I want to be asleep by 10, generally yeah. speaking. It'd be an interesting podcast to have. And I think we'll find the right expert. I, I know of some in my mind, but I know that the, the science tells us that uh, the amount of sleep that you need and I need will vary uh, based on lots of different things. But ultimately there is a kind of a window of the amount of sleep a person needs based, as you say, on that circadian rhythm. Um, but if you lose, let's say you lose two hours sleep one day, you need it back. It's like yeah. hydration. Yeah, you yeah, need, yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to actually yeah. recover it back. So it'd be interesting to, or it was interesting to be there to find out whether or not you, the if one you, thing if, I consider if you have as that well. five hours sleep, I'm thinking about people with new babies and, yeah, 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 and yeah. things, or, or and we're still in the situation where one of ours is quite small and may just wake up early. If he's up, we're up. And then you've, you've lost the amount of sleep that he stole. <laughs> and it's hard to get it back without, without then adjusting everything at the other end, because we've got two bigger kids that we can't just say bugger off to bed now get out of our way yeah. we want to go to bed and we also can't just say we want to bed and leave them up they're too, too young for that so we end up in a situation where to get that sleep back is actually quite hard but that, that's part of the game i suppose you, you it is you, you it is of, we i could have three guinness and stay up even longer and then i've killed it haven't i so yeah. it's uh yeah it's an interesting it's, again it's important to mention this is all ideal world situation we're not sitting here being like oh if you're not getting up at the same time every day you're a fool because obviously people have kids people have stuff that gets in the way but if you can try and mimic the pattern and yeah, reiterate it's worth the working towards something yeah, like that. that's find, it, that's finding it. as close as you can get to that kind of perfect nothing's going to be the perfect is it you've just described a situation where yours wasn't perfect but 
if you can get close to it and make a habit of the habits, the important part. Yeah, and, correct. And, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a calibration point for you to constantly think about, which means your decisions will be better made if you have that as your anchor point. Yeah. So yeah. to go back to your other thing there was, I know there are certain things around the evening that I can do to give me a better overall quality of sleep. Mm -hmm. So not making the last thing that I do before go to be going to bed is turning the TV off and going straight upstairs because I know that that means my overall quality of sleep. If I'm playing catch up from the night before, for example, I'm then going to be not, I'm not going to be catching up. Whereas if, I know if I unwind, I'm doing certain things and walking the dog before bed, I'm sort of completely switching off my mind and my quality of sleep will be better yeah, overall. Yeah. So all these things today, and it comes down to the sort of wearable tech narrative that I, I sort of put out on my own social media is we have lots of data points and information that we are given from the external world. And I just try and look at them in terms of, okay, well, what does that equal in terms of the direction I want to be going in tomorrow, the day after? How do I adjust that to make it better? Okay, that worked. This didn't. How do we adjust? Yeah. And then work from there. But bottom line is I think 99% of people, if they can, should aim to be working towards getting up at the same time every day because it means you've got that steady rhythmic clock, which means that when it comes to waking up, the actual chemicals and sort of neurochemistry going on in your body means that you're more likely to feel awake and cognitive and ready to hit the ground mm -hmm. running rather than going, oh, I'm not, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee sort of stuff because that's not, that's not, you, you're, if, you, if you're in that situation, you're not waking up optimized, ready to go for a difficult work day in a white collar job or giving the best on a, on a work, on a work site, well, anything, it's, it's, you're not going to be the best version of yourself and that might not yeah, be everyone's right. aspiration, but. Well, here's, here's, I suppose it's not everybody's aspiration, but, but here's the, 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 a flippant uh, viewpoint I have about it, and I'm not, I'm in the same boat as you in that sense. But it's, it's disrupted by a few extra things that are there. But we do try to to hit that mark. Um, but I remember, I can't remember who it was. Might have been, might have been Doctor Berardi or somebody like that who was talking about how sort of it's, it's sad. I suppose he wasn't using that language, but it's a shame really that you would get up in the morning and the first thought is, when will I get back to bed? You know, people do. Yeah. That. They get up in the morning and they think. God, I can't wait to get back that's in. That's how there. I felt this morning. Yeah, first, really, first five minutes, yeah. But that's your day started out with sort of almost like a sort of an immediate regret. Like, oh, I've got to get up and my whole day is going to be based around kind of just getting so through so I can get back it? under those covers, you know. <laughs> Whereas if you've got that routine in place, really what we want as people, not, not just what we want, but everybody really should be wanting to get out of bed and going, great, you know, and I know that's Another not, day. Another day, I'm going to seize it by this neck and chuck it about. That was violent, but... That's that's the uh, you revealed something about yourself there. <laughs> something very obvious happened there, but the uh, yeah that, that's the crux of it as well is that, that you know those days where you just think I just want to crawl back under the covers. Um, we want to kind of drift them back in the scale and, and drift the you know I'm ready for this today. You know obviously everybody takes a few minutes to stop being groggy and whatnot, but when you when you get to that point and uh, you're ready to crack on, it's it's great to know that you've got a bit of a march on the day. You're you're, you're working towards positive things as opposed to God, this is going to be awful for the next sixteen hours. You know. Agreed. So without dwelling, to summarize, try and find a routine and a habit that you think gives you the best kickstart for your day because that will carry you through the rest of the day. And once you've understood what that is, try and repeat that on a consistent basis because that pattern will better serve you on a regular basis across a whole range of holistic metrics, markers, however you want to say yeah. it. Unless, so, unless your kickstart is cocaine. In, in uh, which case, in you're which, in the wrong era, I'm yeah, afraid. Yeah. You need to need to go back several decades. Yeah, 80s. Yeah. yeah. Are you reminiscing now? Is that uh, what's happening? Did you see me drift off there? <laughs> Gave up the booze for cocaine, clearly. That's what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> straight swap, straight swap. <laughs> right, number three. Uh, what are we looking at? The greenery and outdoors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've talked about this in, in a few podcasts, and, and uh, but, but from a sort of a, actually a word I don't like particularly, optimization, but, but from that kind of holistic, another word I don't like, perspective, I, I think this sits right up there with, with, with anything else is this kind of, entry into nature now, i know people living in in big cities like like london or, or you know further afield are, are less well in those cities there is opportunity to to find green space and it, or it probably means that you need to make more of an effort to find actually it to well. do it yeah. yeah 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 um um but actually getting out getting away from that hustle and bustle and getting into some green space getting into some nature actually breathing f as fresh air as you can filling your lungs with that and really uh, what we've discussed before and what I fully believe in is that kind of opportunity to this kind of moving meditation that we can enter into with, with relative ease. Uh, I think it's fundamental. I, I actually think it's, it's fundamental to our existence. It's not just a case of making things better in our day to day. Oh, that's another hack or whatever. Yeah. yeah no, I think I want if, to avoid uh, that word entirely. That's right. I think uh, people, 
are probably suffering a, a, a universal malaise based on the the lessening experience that people have in nature and, and we've been very fortunate uh, to discover that for ourselves and also probably where we are very fortunate for the access to that to be a little bit easier than some but that doesn't lend itself to an excuse well i live in such and such a place and there's yeah. we haven't got the same beautiful mountains you're gonna have a park you're gonna have something you know and, and uh, i think if you can get out and move around and there's even an argument to say without that immediate access to green space getting outside anyway and moving as opposed to going from your your office to your house to a closed yeah. gym and all the rest of it be outside it's it's just superhuman isn't it agreed agreed and i mean we can go into the scientific side of things we're not going to in terms of the, the real weeds of it but in terms of daylight first thing in the morning and how that actually yeah, just well, yeah, sits yeah. with your biological clock and why over winter we feel a bit more groggy a bit more generally down as a nation is because we don't get that daylight first thing so we need to make a conscious effort to get as much as we can which as you said if you're somewhere where you don't have access that is more of a reason to sort of correct the imbalance that is coming the other way. And yes, yeah. life is busy, less this is demanding. Oh, it's hard for me to find time to do that. But the enriching qualities that will come from making the time to do so, I firmly believe will flip the switch in the other direction, whereby you'll feel more productive and like you have more time for having yeah. done so. There's no doubt whatsoever. And, and actually the timings of that, like you say, the, the daylight hours and all the rest of it, I mean, people are making a lot of money and, and there's clear evidence there that it works on, on vitamin D and things. Yeah. But you know, your access to vitamin D isn't, doesn't mean you have to have a sunny, you know, you don't have to live in Corfu and, and experience a four o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon, constant sunlight. It doesn't, you can be 20 minutes outside daily, even with cloud cover, and you're still going to be getting a vastly superior, uh, in, in, what's the one I'm looking for, influx, uh, in, intake rather, of vitamin D than you would if you're not. And it's as simple as that. So, yeah, just get outside, I suppose, is the very, very bottom line here. But if you can, get outside and move. Move hard and, and enjoy it. Find somewhere that is uh, yours. Find somewhere that's open. Find somewhere you can be alone and experience that kind of meditative quality. But uh, the bottom line is get outside. I'm going to move us on to number four and sort of pair this with training in the morning. So I know that when we were training for Project Vertical, we were meeting in the Pentlands every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, first thing in the morning at five. So mm -hmm. we were up at four, getting to the Pentlands for five, and it was miserable every morning. <laughs> Remember, every morning we'd be ch turning our phones over to be like, oh, is he cancelled for some reason? Are the kids being up yeah, all night? Yeah, looking for that message yeah, to say, yeah. my car's broken down. Oh, that's a shame. It, it had to be a valid reason. It had to be it? the other person that yeah, did yeah, it. Yeah, but if the other person is, <laughs> be like, oh, that's all right, mate. Don't worry, I'll just go back to bed. I'm like, yes! Sorry to headphone users, by the way, for that. Um, <laughs> but so... <laughs> Getting outdoors is a huge stick. We've made that clear. Yeah. Getting light in, huge stick. We've made that clear. Training in the morning is something that I think is very valuable for me because the second I start to take in information from my phone, the second I start thinking about emails, thinking about what needs done that day, it's very difficult for me to really zone out and engage with my training without worrying about what's to come or what I could be doing at my desk. So if I can make my morning routine one that's focused around getting up, taking some time to just sort of ease myself into the day, then train, train outdoors, preferably if I can. Then I've got so many boxes taped before the day has even begun, which means my overall productivity for that stressful email information, that social media information that comes at me once I do check my phone, I'm better prepared and actually in a much better headspace to be able to tackle it. So mm -hmm. I know looking back, whenever we meet the Pentland's first thing, because there's a social connection element to that as well, which we actually haven't got on this list here, but we'll obviously work it in as we go. If we're meeting outdoors, in some hills first thing in the morning as the sun is coming up getting Which our training stunning. ticked yeah. off yeah. with one another to then go into a working day where we're actually going to be tackling some of the same challenges and some of the same problems together we are taking infinite amounts of boxes in terms of preparing ourselves and setting ourselves up for success with all of those things there and i yeah. know that if i i know training in the morning first thing is best for me but when i wake up and have that immediate regret if i want to go straight back to bed it's really hard for me not to just think right oh, I don't feel like my training will go very well. I'm just going to bump it to lunchtime. And then I get to lunchtime, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd trained this morning. Yeah. And I've been doing that a lot recently just because there's so much stuff going on work-wise. I've got so many training sessions at the moment that I can just be like, oh, well, I'll just do one now, one then, yeah, try and work it, it in. It, and then what inevitably it happens... It frustrates you. I know it frustrates <laughs> you because then, you know, you, you, you'll say to me, well, exactly as you're saying now, God, I've, I've moved that one around a few bags now, now. And then you have to restructure your date, which comes back to your habit forming and all the rest of it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I call it... Uh, 
uh, stealing a march on the day. You know, you've, you've already, before the day started, and, and this, I don't know, maybe it's a competitive element. We know Jocko Willink shows you his watch every morning, and uh, I'm sure he's just got it on a, on a hard set. Good. <laughs> but the, uh, the fact that Again, is, with no consideration of when he goes to bed. No, he probably, probably goes to bed at 6 p.m. <laughs> if that, yeah. yeah. It's like but, Mark Wahlberg's daily routine whenever yeah. he went mental. <laughs> and he just did a normal working day with about four hours of training and two hours exactly. of work. Exactly. It's just, yeah, just, yeah. just a long list of things. Yeah, he just went to bed put really shoes early. on, four yeah. o'clock. Anyway. Oh, he's up at 2 30, but he went to bed at Insane. 5. Yeah, he's getting 12 hours of sleep, mate. But the, the, uh, the reality is, if you're getting up early, you're getting moving. In our scenario, that's maybe a bit extreme for people. But if we got up, uh, as you say, at five o'clock, we met, meet, and we do this on a regular now, meet each other at six, half six, just to train, and then into the office. Those are days that we both feel much more energized, much more uh, capable, and we're already ahead of the day. The, the, you know, when we tackle the day in terms of our kind of workload and the things that we have to do to be uh, productive, we've already stolen a march in that. We've already been up for two hours and done productive things, exercised our bodies, which uh, switches our minds on, which you know, releases the endorphin, all those great, crazy things. So we get into the office and I suppose if it was a fly on the wall, they would know which days that had happened and which days it hadn't yeah, because yeah, the yeah. energy is different, you know, and uh, that's something that we, we do capitalise on as much as we can. And then when you get home, you're less likely to reach for that beer and you're less likely to, well, to be grumpy and so many things perpetuate that, negative yeah, yeah, habits. Yeah, so, so then when we get home, uh, there's, uh, for me anyway, I can go home and, and this is kind of reaching into another thing that we've been talking about recently is that, if, I, if I've missed that training session, I can then get home and then think, well, I need to do a training session because I'm, uh, you know, I'm training for something in particular, so I, I can't miss it or I don't want to miss it because of that, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm then having to make a decision as to whether I come home, cook a meal and then go straight back out again, in which case nobody sees me all day, which is it's important that the kids do. It's important that Ashley and I spend time together. So Johnny, how do you solve this? Number five. Well... This is something we joked about before we came in here, wasn't it? Is that actually uh, something that's been working really well for me that I felt kind of was an alien concept is scheduling it in. So if I've got it in the diary, that these are the times where I down tools, turn the phone off uh, and focus everything towards the children for three to four hours. So I, I get the chance now to pick them up for school and spend time. I'll cook. Uh, if Ashley's working, that's time that's just myself and, and the kids. We'll play uh, and then after uh, uh, dinner's cleared up and things, we all do that together and there's a little bit more play and then a little bit more work for me. But that time is spent, and it hadn't been before, it had been kind of spent kind of hopping between, oh, I haven't done this for work, there's an email I need to send, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of trying to do it all at once, which I know a lot of people do. You end up in that scenario where I do a lot of my work from my phone, as, as you do too, uh, and uh, you know a kid will hop onto your knee and say, you know, look at this face I'm pulling or whatever kids want you to see or look at this dance that's, that's terrible or whatever it might be. I'm flashing, bro. And, and you end up saying, uh, well, give me a minute, I'm, I'm working or getting sort of aggravated by that situation. And that's an entirely unfair because I've created a scenario where nobody's getting the right amount of attention. So for me, uh, because we have four children, uh, scheduling that time in, which doesn't always work, but if, if it's a plan that I have, then I do tend to stick to it. So that early morning start with the training, we've got the training done, it's out of the way, we've got the work day done, that's out of the way. I now have this scheduled time with my kids and I don't then I don't spend that time then thinking, oh shit, I haven't done X, Y and Z because all the other boxes have been ticked. So habit, habit, habit. I think one caveat here that I'm going to add just just to make, make sure it's clear for other people's perspective as well, is to make sure you effectively communicate the reasons why you're doing that to your partner as well. Yeah. Because I can all... I can understand why in some situations trying to explain that you getting up at the crack of dawn, fumbling about the bedroom, leaving the house in the car to go and train with your pal in the hills might be difficult to comprehend for somebody who doesn't understand the value that's in it. Yeah. So it's then trying to make sure that if you are going to time block family time, which I try and do in terms of something I'll talk about with the, the green zone time mm -hmm. without children, which obviously makes it easier for me, but Erin fully understands how I'm the best version of myself for doing these things. So yeah. obviously yeah. Ashley gets it, but for those that might not, have such a, for those whose partners might not have experienced the benefits that they feel from it. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're effectively communicating why yeah. it's so valuable. We we went through that the same as everybody else would. Uh, I'm sure you and you and Aaron have done the same. Is that you know it's like well, what you're saying is you're going to be out during this time, you're going to be doing that during that time, and, and the time, as you say, is, is is given away elsewhere. But then, if if you look at this list or, or the, these all these things we're saying, is that then the time that you set aside for that thing is now quality time in a very real sense. You're present. And that that's it exactly. You're present there in the moment. You're present with the kids, and the kids feel it. You can see in their reactions that they feel it. But 
you know, it's a very obvious and honest thing from children, but your partner, your, your, your uh, significant other friends and family will see it too because you're not then thinking, oh, God, I've got this out and, and distracted all the time. If you're there and, and present, as you see, it's a huge thing. And there's probably some argument to say that uh, you know that's something that you need to propose you need to say this is something we're going to try i feel like these are going to be the benefits let's give it x amount of time uh, but i'd be confident enough to guarantee that if you did it right and you did it in the manner i mean we haven't laid a, a, a full template plan here or anything but if you kind of follow these ideas and these concepts um that what you get back from it is far more than you actually put in it's it's kind of a you know it's a self-fulfilling thing it's a, a very positive cycle of of uh, proactivity i think I think whether family or otherwise, time blocking is the, is the habit there. So moving yeah. on to number six, my relationship with caffeine and your relationship with caffeine, I'm funnily enough, is very different as right Johnny now. is currently sipping a coffee at 10 past four, the deviant. So for me, I have a interesting relationship with caffeine for somebody that used to be a, let's take Mr. Hyde and then chin a monster and then go and deadlift heavy with some smelling salts sort of vibe. But my relationship with caffeine now is very much I have a, a sort of scoop of rise from Human24, which is electrolytes, caffeine, and some nootropics first thing in the morning. I will then have one more serving of caffeine either in the form of a coffee or if I'm dieting, I'll probably have a Monster Ultra just because it's quite tasty and a bit more filling than a coffee and means that it's something I can have if I'm training at lunchtime or something like that. It's just sweet, so it sort of satisfies that. But then I'll have nothing else. So... Six to eight hours after waking, the science generally indicates you shouldn't be having caffeine if you want to not interfere with your adenosine and actually not prevent that sleep urge from happening naturally at a time when your body is telling you to go to sleep. So for me, I, I'm generally not having caffeine after 11 a.m., maybe 12 most days. And as, as early as that? Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I knew that I, and I've been, I've been interested to watch your... Um you play with those numbers and all the rest of it. You know, I'm, as, you, as you can tell, I'm not as good at that. I have cut down yep. dramatically in actual fact. Again, it's not, nothing needs to happen overnight, but I've, no, been, no, I've been steadily doing this over time because yeah, for me, yeah. I, I felt the the way I was feeling when I was waking up when I'd had caffeine in the afternoon versus when I wasn't was noticeably different. Yeah. So then what do I do? Analyze the situation. Okay, let, if, if it is this, then I'll, I'll try it. And then I've consistently been feeling better. So I've just sort of had a hard and fast rule and I go from there. Mm -hmm. And that's um, that's it. And even things like, to go back to the drinking thing, if I'm out having some drinks with Aaron or friends and somebody says, let's have an espresso martini, a drink that I will, it'll be very difficult for me to say no to. I don't ever consider that as a coffee because I'm out drinking, so mm -hmm. everything's falling apart anyway. But I then know that I feel worse as a result of the booze and the caffeine the following day. So it's just all, the, all this information that I'm being given by my body is telling me this is this is something you should avoid. So I, I've taken that and acted upon it, really. Uh -huh. So for me, my relationship with caffeine is a hard and fast cut-off between 11 and midday, and that's just what works best for me. And then generally my overall dosage throughout the day would probably be no higher than 300, 350 milligrams. It used to be up towards 750 when I was a big meathead powerlifter, I'd say, which is probably, it's not too much sort of scientifically, but it's a big number. Oh, I'd, I'd guarantee I was two or three times that uh, yeah. not so long. Well, my again habits habits are so, and clearly I'm somebody who who. Uh, I mean, if I capitalised on these things, would do extraordinarily well. We don't do badly anyway. But the um, yeah, the, the caffeine thing for me, uh, I have had quite a lot of success and enjoyed switching actually to to rise in the morning. Uh, this is not an advert. This is just yeah, yeah. What we genuinely have in in that sense. Uh, it's the, the habit of having. Something that hydrates you. It's the hydration. And having yeah, 400 yeah, yeah, milliliters yeah. of water first thing is a big difference in yeah. and of itself, isn't it? Yeah. I do feel like uh, I think the, the, the mechanism of the, the, the caffeine uh, in that product uh, seems to hit you better. You know, so I can feel like I'm getting a nice little heavy boost, but it's not the same as you get from caffeine. That agitation doesn't come, you know. So That's because of the theanine. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so yeah. It's, uh, it's been an interesting switch, um, but a very difficult one for me because, again, the, the ceremony of coffee in the morning was sort of hugely important, you know. But I've switched that up uh, and in turn then, because that's not something I'm connected to quite so much, uh, this is actually, although it's late in the day, it's actually my first coffee of the day. So um, I'm kind of, or is it? Maybe it's my second. <laughs> I don't want to tell lies. You're lost cause, mate. You're lost cause. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, the, the, the habit of, of even just controlling that, that, that caffeine uh, has, has made a difference for me. I'm not um, uh, quite as strict as yourself, but it makes a big difference. It genuinely does. Yep. I was somebody that would work. Uh, especially back when I was seeing clients one to one, I would I would have a, in the little break between the two, I would have a coffee, 
And sometimes if you see six, seven, maybe even eight clients in a day, which means six, seven, maybe eight coffees oh, in a day. Goodness. I was insane. And it, would get, and it I, took me quite I, a long I'd time be, to wonder why I was so kind of het up and tight all the time. I'd just was, be in and out of the bathroom every oh, six was, minutes. Yeah, the whole thing was insane. I'd be, dr- uh, I'd be so dry. But it's one of those things that you don't realize until way into it. You're yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, I'm drinking X amount of coffee today. And, and that's, it's, it's kind of outrageous. And I wonder. can't stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the person you're telling, yes, let go of my collar. Yeah, please, let go of me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having some, some, some coffee today. <laughs> So, yeah, it makes a huge difference to control these things. We're, we're back in that same kind of net. People are getting to know me a little bit. We're yeah, back in the same place as the booze was. Showing your true colours here. Yeah, but uh, it makes a big difference. The one thing I would hard and fast advocate, you drop you being the person watching or listening, not you, Johnny. You're okay. okay well, may, I drink, maybe. I mean, is it okay to finish this call? No, you can finish that. Yeah, you're safe for now. Is after you've had a meal, having a coffee. This is what my parents do. Just, it's, it's, it's a, just, that's a very it, British habit. It's a very, or a it's a very, it's a very generational yeah. British yeah, habit, yeah, yeah. which it's my dad. I'm sorry, well, dad. Restaurants will say the same as well. Would you like, would you like a coffee? Yeah, but that's an upsell. That's and also, an upsell, would you like yeah. some cheese? But, I mean, Why would I have cheese right now? Yeah, well, yes, please give me the cheese. <laughs> Italian Italians have coffee, but Italians also have a much healthier way of life in general yeah, yeah. terms, so it's not really the same. But my dad's example is always, I always get to sleep fine. And I'm like, well, yes, but the sleep that you are then having is going to be inhibited by the fact that you have got X amount of caffeine still in your system because the half-life is going to be active until you wake up in the morning. So replacing that with a decaf, if you just want the taste of coffee, like I did with non-alcoholic beer, for example, for the ceremony of it all, or replacing that with a a herbal tea or a glass of sparkling water, all sounds very boring. I sound yeah. like I'm coming across a bit it's, of a, it's, it's, a bit yeah, of a dork today. Not but really. Like you say, the general, generational thing's funny. It's just when you said about your dad, well, I sleep fine. Probably looking at you like, why are you? This is ridiculous. I asked, My dad's always been a booze trade his whole life. So yeah, all, yeah. I, I think I was always two pints I, I and three coffees deep. Drinking at your some time. water uh, at one point. Water of all things. It's not even you know just water. And uh, I think I was out loud saying I haven't drank much water today. I better get some in. Something, something like that. Some, something out loud. My dad was there and he said, "Why are you drinking water?" <laughs> I said, "What do you mean? Why am I drinking water?" He said, "I, said, I need to stay hydrated." And what, what do you drink? He said, "Coffee and beer." What do you mean? What do I drink? <laughs> the whole thing ended up like he was very confused as to why I would, I would need extra hydration <laughs> if I if I'd already maybe just why don't you just have coffee and beer, son? I was like, well, so there's a generational thing. I, I don't laugh because obviously obviously we have more access to information, but <laughs> but there is a real British generational thing of having a coffee yeah. after dinner, which I firmly believe needs to stop because this is affecting the sleep of a very very thinly stretched nation. And I think we all need to look after ourselves a little bit more. And that is one step of several that I think we can employ on a day-to-day basis. Anyway, yeah, yeah. number seven is... Well, I, I, I mean, it, it seems like a it seems like a bit of a hard sell moment, really, being that we are Omnia Performance on a podcast. But uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, and and probably, I guess, something to do with managing habits, managing things that you, you need to manage... Uh, and certainly offsetting stress to a certain degree, but but we both agree that actually having a coach, uh, having somebody to work alongside you to manage some of that uh, uh, information and detail has uh, proven extraordinarily useful for us, I think. Just so this isn't such an obvious hard sell, the intention, to clarify, isn't a hard sell here, but the premise of this is the same as outsourcing to a cleaner or outsourcing to yeah. a food delivery or that sort of thing. It's basically taking something that is a key fundamental part of your life that isn't going to change and taking the stress and the workarounds around it and giving them to someone else. So having a coach in our eyes, in terms of managing your holistic well-being and lifestyle, is the same as employing a cleaner to clean your house one well, day a week or whatever yeah, it is. Just think about it as workload. If I've got uh, training to do and I'm working towards a, an end and working towards a goal, uh, whatever it may be that I'm working towards, and and I then have to sit down in amongst the work that I'm doing and with the family that I'm trying to love and, and, and the, the time we've tried to set aside for, for positive action, like being outside and all the rest of it. And then I have to sit down and write a full program that, you know, I may not be fully conversant in doing, you know, I might not fully understand. That's a lot of stress. And then... There might getting, be ego attached to it as well. well that's right. The, things, there yeah. often is if you're trying to work for yourself. And then you get yourself into the gym, think this doesn't work for me, that's stress. Then your gym session hasn't been effective, hasn't been productive. You feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Do I need to rearrange this, et cetera, et cetera. And the whole thing can be such a negative churn. But what it has done in the past, and we know this from, from our own experience and from experience as coaches, is then people then switch off from training because it's an, it's a negative experience all the time. And, and uh, 
you know, going back to that outside uh, experience, being outside in nature, movement, movement and physical uh, action, actually stressing your body in, in a positive way is fundamentally necessary as a human. And if we can help people to do that in the right manner and take the stress out of figuring out how to do that, uh, then then it's, it's a massive win for everybody. So, yeah, from our own perspective, um, and again, regardless of who this is coming from in that sense, having a coach offsetting that that kind of uh, stressful experience of trying to manage what is it I'm supposed to do in the bloody gym or wherever it might be. Uh, again, triathlon, you're, you're, you're very much in, in uh, deep water with, pardon the pun. Oh. Uh, you know, figuring out what the lap time should be, figuring out what the pacing might need to be, figuring out whether or not you need to analyze whether that pacing on that particular day that you did was affected by such and such. Maybe that was the day that you got up at five, but you only got to bed, at, you know, like like last night. What do I do with my training now? Offset that stuff. Make always this training is one aspect. Training is one example of that. But we can offset a lot of these things. There are experts in their field in a lot of these things, and trying to figure everything out for ourselves. It's completely redundant when you can you can lean on somebody who, whose sole existence is is to say, ah, this is the way to do that. Let me help you. You know, yeah. And take the emotion, take the ego out of it, and hand it off to someone else who can look at it rationally without any of those thoughts. So that's why we train one another to keep our idiots at bay, as I think you said last time. I was yeah. watching that one of re-watching our own podcast this morning, and you politely said yes. The way I was trying to disguise the fact that we coach one another is to prevent either one from being. The person that we truly are, which is a big egotistical masculine uh, moron. Yeah, morons. Yes. Anyway, that was number seven. And number eight for me is the green zone time. And by that I mean time spent doing things that are entirely regenerative. And for me, that used to be training. Whereas training is no longer green zone because it's part of my work there's a lot of data mm. attached to it as you've just said there's lap times there's pacing there's a lot of stress and thinking around it so for me my four hour five hour bike rides aren't as regenerative as they used to be because they're very much in the work category they're in the stress category they're in the, in the additional thought category and for quite a while i've been quite naive to that because i thought oh training's my escape when in reality it wasn't so i didn't have any day-to-day -day escape i didn't have a third space mm. away from work home and then there was a gap I needed a third space to go to psychologically, figuratively, however you want to put it, and fill that. So for me, that is now trying to basically avoid my phone as much as possible on a Sunday. I can't because I need to upload YouTube videos and things and sort of shout about it. But other than that, I try and avoid it as much as possible. I spend time cleaning first thing in the mornings, like sorting the house because a more organized household for me is a less cluttered mind. It feels like I've had an, made an achievement that's out with the day-to-day -day. it's sort of a personal yeah you've, you've taken control there Fergus that sort of thing makes sense yeah. long dog walk no phone talking with Erin having a bit more of a not an existential discussion but a bit of a where are we in our lives how's everything going what direction are we going and are we doing the right things what can we change all this sort of stuff it's a real calibration and me trying to be strict, quite strict with that it's going to a new coffee shop it's trying a new baked good from all the delightful places around us we're lucky to, lucky enough to have up here and spending time where I'm genuinely trying to decompress. So I struggle to find that time. I need to try and find more of it during the week. But for me, making sure that I make time to do that is essential. Otherwise, I will feel like I'm desperate for it all the time. So mm -hmm. if I don't make time for it, it's only going to make things worse, <clears throat> even though it feels difficult timelining-wise to make it happen. I need to find time to spend time doing things, say time more, Fergus, drink every time there. I say the word time. Sorry, everyone. You're going home <laughs> early tonight. Taxi! But spending as much... I'm trying to think of a synonym that, for time. As uh, much... As much headspace? No, it doesn't quite Trying work. to devote <laughs> as much energy, energy as energy. you can... <laughs> to, yeah. ...to the turning of the clock in which one is finding fulfilment away from stress. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yes. So for, for you, that is... Your examples are, like you say, cleaning, and actually, is that that's a meditative process. Sometimes low, low, low stress, high fulfillment, small wins. Yeah, is how I define them. So, think, so uh, that's why the, the conversation with there are always good because I finish them feeling like, yeah, something's been achieved. No, Ashley and I do the same yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like we'll sit down and have a kind of a. Uh, and, and, and a positive discussion as opposed to a state of the union shit we didn't pay this bill or whatever it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like you know where are we in life isn't this great what we've done it's just it's, it's sort of expressing love in that certain sense I think I find that um, although again it's, it's, it's a mindful reminder 
uh, to get out and do it. I know people giggle about this a little bit, but getting out and, on my skateboard. You know, yeah, mate, I've fun. been craving it like mad right yeah, recently. Yeah, because that, it's fun. I don't have to think about it. I'm not trying to be good state, on it. I'm just, yeah, exactly. Time, that. Yeah. And, and I do find that in those moments, you know, I can get, and, and he's, uh, yeah, great analogy, flow state really, because that's what it is. You get the opportunity just to roll about and it's kind of free. If I had more space, literal space to do it, I, I would just skate, and you see people just pushing in the boards. What's that song? Push, push, glide. You know, you can, all that. It's just freedom, isn't it? It's just freedom, the opportunity to kind of express yourself. Excuse me, I'm making a lot of noise here. Express yourself in that manner. But there are other ways you can do it. I think people need to find that for themselves. But yeah, that's vital, I think, isn't it? I think sort of psychologically, it is vital. Without it, you're going to start to fall apart a little bit. Excuse me, I swallowed. <laughs> Just got choked in <laughs> I there. I was there. dying there. <laughs> I was worried for a second. Is anyway, that, okay? that is that. And the two left are ones that I wrote down. So I don't want to ruin the cadence that we're on here where we're alternating, but I'll talk about my take on planning the night before because I actually don't know how you approach things. No, I do this. This is, this you do this. This okay, is a good discussion. You fire, you yeah. fire away then. Uh, in fact, I was giving this out as, as a bit of advice to a friend of ours, uh, a mutual friend just the other day, is that what I've, I've found is massively useful. Interesting to hear about it from your perspective. We haven't actually talked about this, have we? But, um, no. No, I'll sit down at night and I'll plan out uh, with a paper diary. Yeah, same, same. I was, I was going to say maybe that's an age thing, but but, but I, I like to do it with a, with a, a pen on paper. Um, there's something there, isn't there, in, in that in that physical interaction? It, I think it's, it's it's the kinetic energy side yeah. of the brain. And, and I, you, I don't you, know nearly enough to be able to quantify what yeah. I'm saying there, but I think it's just that the way that boys. I think you're what, seeing it as well as, as, yeah. as thinking it as well. I think, and then that interaction of making that. I don't know. Some, there's I, something I, excellent I, there. I think it, what I was told at school was that generally blokes young boys learn better when doing things which means that by writing things out repeatedly because you are physically moving even though it's a very very small motor pattern in terms of demand your brain is registering it better whereas girls can be different whereby they can just take the information on them retain it okay without this might be this might, i might be completely off here please anyone that actually has information reach out to me and tell me whether i'm along the right track here but that I've always found that actually allows me to process what I'm putting down much better. Yeah. yeah so if, well, I'm, well, if I'm planning anything night before or otherwise, it's on paper. So I'll get my diary and I'll write in it, um, try and remember this off the top of my head, because it's actually, I've, I've written down a kind of a template that I fill out every, every night now. So it's um, the three big jobs that I need to do the following day. Uh, I'll write them down uh, so that, they, so that they, they're, the priority of them is in my mind, as opposed to I've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. What are the key things I need to do? What are the, the little habits that I want to tick off? I'll write that down. Uh, and, and simple things like what are the appointments that I need to attend to and all the rest of it. Because uh, as Fergus and I both know, my diary is not as clean as, as Fergus is. <laughs> so I'll do that. I'll write that down. And what that seems to give me, uh, I've been really impressed at this uh, in actual fact. Well, what that seems to give me is, is it's closure on the day and closure on the idea of thinking about tomorrow. Because when I've finished it and written it down, I know what my day looks like the following day. And, and along with that pattern, what I'll do is when I get up, I then the, one of the first things I do, pretty much the first thing I do, is revisit that list, have a look at it again. So when I go to night, uh, go to bed at night, I've I've kind of almost literally put down my tools, so I can do that as the, the last thing I'll do in my uh, work day, stroke evening anyway, and then I walk away from work, I walk away from all those things, uh, and just relax, and then the following day. The list's already made. It was made in, in, a, in a place of kind of creativity. and, and, and it's, it's the same control. logic as having a coach outsourcing like we were just yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. You're almost outsourcing to yourself the night before. It was something, uh, I don't know how you stumbled, whether this is just something that you've, you, you've come across yourself or, or not. I can't remember the name of the book. It was a book I read and it seemed interesting to me. And I thought, I'll try it. And within days, I was like, this is magic for me. This is really, really good. Because uh, the relaxation part is like, right, that's done. I don't have to think about that anymore until the time to do it. Because now I know what I'm doing. Probably, probably better for me in the sense that I am quite so scatterbrained and all over the shop. Yeah, um, that that was a, a lot of control was given back to me. It's like these are the things, you know. I, I think that's it. So, so for, for me, I've got something. I've got a planner from Amazon. Um, I've gone through a fair few of them now, but I generally I know the structure of the planner. So whether I've got the planner or not, I follow the structure, which is it, it makes me it makes me look at everything that needs done at that moment in time. And then I break down the three priorities for the following day. So those Isn't are, that interesting? Yeah, yeah, sort of yeah. Both of those three things. Though. Those okay. are the three things that I am getting done under no under any circumstances yeah. tomorrow. And then I've got a secondary list of all the things that need done but don't need done tomorrow. And then once I've done the three things, I can move on to the sort of subcategories and any of those are then a bonus. 
And then what that does is rather than just having a long to-do yeah. list, and if you get through five or six out of 30 in one day, you're like, oh, I've barely got anything done. Because you view that you can punt them into the next day and then try and find the time, and then they might be a priority the, fo priority the following day. But the biggest habitual change in doing this, it's made me realize what I can actually realistically achieve within the context of a day. Mm -hmm. And therefore, be realistic about how to approach it, when to approach it, what else I can manage, and therefore give accurate timelines to people, give accurate timelines to myself, accurately schedule in my training. And then what I'll do the night before, once I know what those three priorities are, what the secondary priorities are, I will then actually map them out hour by hour into my day based on when I'm getting up, including training. Sometimes, yeah, this is again, ideal world, I might get something happen with a car, I might get stuck in traffic, there might be yeah. this, there might be that, so it all goes to pot. But again, it's if you've got the plan in place, then you've got something to aim towards, and aiming towards it means you'll probably get closer to it, even if something goes wrong, than you would if you just thought, ah, something might go wrong, I'll just make up as I go along. So it's three priorities. It's actually three things I'm grateful for, first and foremost, which... Uh, ah, there you go, so I do I, that too. I'm not yeah. going to lie, my, answer, my three answers are the same every single day. I'm not that good at really thinking outside the box on this. It's Erin and the dogs freedom to manage my own time and the environment in which I live with the outdoors. Same every single day, those three Mine's things. My, my biceps, the fact that I've now got a tooth back in my face and uh, I, I'm talking shit, obviously. Yeah, very simple. I mean, the second one probably is. Probably obvious. that is. Yeah, yeah, is probably I, I've been grateful for that and I just accept that that's there. No, that's interesting because I do the same thing as well. Uh, um, Some people are better at that than others. I think it's a very introspective thing to do. But for me, those, those are the three things that I wake up every morning and that think. That's the positive influence brilliant. of prayer at one point. You would sit down, kneel yeah, at your yeah, bed, same premise, say your yeah. prayers, and you, you, you thank the Lord, or whoever you prayed to, but you know, in, in, in a very Christian environment, you, you thank the Lord for things that you're grateful for. And there was, there, was a, there was a pattern to how you were supposed to do that. I remember doing that yeah, as, yeah, yeah, as yeah. a little boy, you know, and. Uh, it's the same thing. There's a, there's a massive amount of worth in that. I like the three priorities thing a lot. It seems to work for me much more than I would have given it credit for. If you're then missing those three priorities, if there's a pattern forming where you can't manage those three priorities, yeah. then you need to scale it to two Yeah, yeah. Or, or scale it to one. And then. But it also gives you interaction yeah. with those. Why am I missing those? Is it something to do with my diary? Yeah. So for me, that was the case. I was missing things and it was, it was okay, I need to diarize better. And that came from that process, in fact. What this helps you do as well is abandon the stuff that, stresses you out that you're not managing to do like for example i'm trying to think there's like there's a there's a factoring fee on the estate we live on that's like 26 quid every quarter and every single time i'm about nine weeks late in paying it because i get it through like 26 quid i'll pay it like that. and months pass and i get overdue notice after overdue notice and i'm like oh. but it's just because it's it's there constantly but it's constantly being deprioritized and that's one of the things that Pre previously I would have been really stressed about not sorting this is, if, if the company that looks after the factory is listening I'm very sorry but it's just slow down my priority list and I know you don't charge interest so it means that I'll get to it I'll get to <laughs> it, when, uh, I'll get to it whenever, whenever there is a whenever the opportunity arises and I don't get to the end of them oh I haven't done that I need to do that if I've signed out for the day I'm like okay that's tomorrow's problem yeah. and that's maybe it's things like DMs it's things like replying to YouTube comments I used to really really worry if I wasn't getting back to them on these arbitrary standards that I set myself I wasn't doing a good job when all I was doing was burning myself into the ground because I couldn't work 24-7 without without just not sleeping which yeah, isn't yeah. going to work that'll last for about a day maybe two if I was going back to my Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde supplementing with monsters in my eyeballs sort of day but I think the bottom line here the other thing I do actually forgot to mention is at the end of each day when I'm planning the following day I reflect on the day that's just gone Mm -hmm. And then look mm -hmm. at what I did well, what I didn't do well, where things went wrong. Yeah, same here. I wonder, if we, wonder if you've got the same Amazon. We template. might, we might do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I think that. No, I think that's a process that's been kind of proven and and written out. We probably discovered it from different angles or from different places, but it's clearly it works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, clearly, we both see that's been interesting because clearly we both see value in it. And, and probably there's something's come from that little moment that we've had there, going, "Oh, you too." Is that actually there's a lot of value in talking about these things with each other because. Uh, you know, makes you feel like you're doing something right. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly validation is great, and it feels great to go, yes, you know, because I know you do certain things well, and and if it turns out that you know by uh, complete coincidence I'm doing the same thing, it's like, oh, good, good. I know Fergus does that well, and and so that's quite nice. But but also, you know, if you're chatting with people about, you know, you seem in in a positive place now. What have you done? Well, I've changed X, Y, and Z. That could immediately be something like, sure, I've not thought about doing yeah, that. Yeah, what yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. And, and the, you know that simple social interaction of ask, asking each other seems again like the booth thing. Seems like an obvious thing, but people don't do it. Dudes especially don't say, "How are you? How are you getting on with your life? And why is it? You know, what are your priorities tomorrow, you, Jeff? <laughs> Jeff, you seem more positive. Is there something that you've changed in your habitual blah blah blah? But really, you know, asking those questions in however manner you want to ask them. What's changed, Frank, is, uh, is pretty bloody useful because you might 
you might discover something that's, that's just changes your life you know these some of these things have changed our lives in oh massively sense. massively and uh, the, the knock-on effects of that are enormous so number 10 and this is a funny one because this is something i am avidly for and this is something that Johnny, I think on concept agrees with, but doesn't yeah. yet execute. I don't do, uh, but, but yeah, so go on, crack I, on I think it. one of the best things that we can do in the modern world that we all live in, with the hustle, the bustle, the stress, <laughs> the mess, I'm probably out of rhyming couplets, but nonetheless, oh, sick. The distress. <laughs> that was a rhyming triplet, my friend. Oh, um, okay. okay. The Edinburgh Fringe is coming. I think I might sign up for a stage at this point. <laughs> Sleeping with your phone outside of your bedroom. And I have recently added an additional we, we, layer. We should add, that's a bit of an eat, shoots, and leaves. It sounds like you take your phone and sleep outside of the bedroom. What did I say? Sleeping, Sleeping with, with your phone, phone outside oh, of the bedroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll cancel my friend show. I've clearly <laughs> rendered myself a fool. I am the jester of Every this. night I say goodnight. Okay, and so I take my phone out when and I go, sleep on the landing. When I go to sleep in my bedroom, <laughs> I put my phone in an entire least separate room. Yeah. And that has been a habit that's become useful. And then there is a second element to that now, which I have found enormously beneficial, is that my whoop. 4.0 has an alarm built into it. The sound of the police. Is that sirens? That's the what distance, that was, yeah. the narrator yeah. says. <laughs> Which means that not only... So, so stage one to this is sleeping, sleeping with your phone outside the room. That means that when you get up, you've got to get out of bed to go and turn it off. And the process of getting out of bed means it's significantly more... You're creating friction between you getting back into bed and therefore going back to sleep. Sometimes that happens because you're like, oh, God, that bed looks cozy. I'm going to get in it. Mm. But by that point, if you put your bed in the shower, you're like, oh, I'll just get in the shower now. Or you put it by a glass of water, you're like, oh, I'll drink this water. Oh, I feel a bit more perked up now. I'll just crack on. But in snoozing or turning off your alarm, you are picking up your phone, which means that you might see an email from your boss at five in the morning that they sent at midnight asking you to do something. And then immediately you might be stressed first thing, thinking, oh, today's a mess. Oh, I didn't factor that in. Oh, no, 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 no. And that happened to me most mornings because I'd have a plan, then I'd see something and I'd be like, oh, I'll just get to that now whilst it's mm. there, fresh in my mind. And then before I know it's 9 a.m. and my whole day is completely not how I'd planned out the day before. But with the alarm on the wrist with Whoop, that means that my alarm wakes me up. I then choose when to look at my phone. That's completely on my terms, which I think yeah. is fantastic for me personally. I think, it, I, I, like you say, you said at the beginning of this particular one, conceptually, I'm, I'm all for it. But, actually, but you have four it, children, so... well. How there are probably it? ways around it. Well, what I do wrong is twofold. One, I, I take the phone in. That, that is, that, that, like most people, that serves as my alarm clock. So I take it in. Uh, and actually, if I'm entirely honest, Ashley quite often serves as my alarm clock. She's better at getting up. But if I if I if I need to get up earlier, which is a lot more these days, I'll uh, I'll set my phone as my alarm. But I can't put it in a different room, like. Uh, all the different rooms are taken with little people in them. <laughs> so it would be unfair to put it in the kids' rooms. So, well, you're getting up too. I'm coming I'm in, up. boys. <laughs> so, or, or put it in the bathroom or put it downstairs. Because it wake everybody else up is the yeah. problem that I've got. So and I need then you something. would not be starting the day on that. Yeah. That, oh, there'd be <laughs> no way I'm starting that day without undue stress of just walking the whole household who didn't want to be awake. Uh, so, so I have a problem there in that sense. And, uh, you know, I have to, I have to factor find a way around that something I didn't know until we discussed earlier on that your your whoop band um, vibrates gently and wakes you up that way I've tried that with the Garmin but I found the Garmin I really didn't clunky. Do no, it does do I, mean, that. I hate sleeping in the Phoenix it's yeah, so yeah really big so and uncomfortable clumpy. to sleep I slept a couple of times and woke up with a, you know where it, an indentation yeah, where, you know so it, it takes like, a no. few days to go away as well yeah it really did it's yeah. uncomfortable so I bruised a bone probably but the whole thing was uncomfortable so I didn't do it again and I just you know so the phone's useful for that sense so then what I also do is I, I have a, a habit that I like that actually suits me is I read before I, I go to sleep. So I'll read, uh, I have to read nonsense like fiction. I don't, nothing, nothing that's actually making me think or switch on or like, you know, I don't read uh, anything to do with my job or anything, just throw away crap because it's, it's a nice way to sell. So I don't watch TV at night or anything like people do, I'll, I'll read. And um, so I, I then, if I'm enjoying the book or whatever and I feel like I'm not, I'll take it in with me turn all the settings off and all the rest of it, and then use the Kindle app. Where, okay. So I'm using the phone, but the, the blue light's off and all that kind of stuff, so I'm getting by it in that sense, but it's still there, which you have, means... You've got an iPad, don't you? Uh, I've actually got a Kindle, believe it or not, <laughs> so I don't need to use the Kindle app. But, but my suggestion there was going to be, if you leave your phone downstairs, but use a separate device yeah, with so the same settings yeah, that, to, that's wait, what I to need wake to do. you up. Uh, and, and like I say, ironically, using the Kindle app, I actually have a small and useful Kindle that I could just use instead of the Kindle app on my phone. But then I would, I, I'm using the phone for that because the phone's already in the room because I need it for the alarm. See, so if I was going meta here, yeah, full on deep dive analysis, scuba diving suit on and all, I'd say you, wouldn't, you don't want to put your phone down. Uh, I don't. 
Yes. You know, so this is this is where I was going with that is that I then I'm in a very very uh, uh, and, and you've just described it as which I believe it to be kind of a negative habit of of then the first thing I do in the morning is I answer the phone I, in the sense that I, I turn the alarm off, uh, turn the settings on, everything lights up, Outlook tells me this is to be done and that's to be done, and I'm already kind of semi stressed because I didn't want to interact with that, but I, I, I do it. You know, there's yeah. there's something there. It's quite interesting uh, stuff. There's probably so I'm not using social media in in that sense. I think people immediately turn to Instagram on yeah. and find themselves sort of connected with that. Uh, I don't know, there's probably some kind of drug nature interaction it's with that. Immediate way. dopamine smash yeah, in the morning, would, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying then, then they don't then they need that again and you become slightly addicted to it and all the rest of it. I'm not quite doing that. Although that said, a lot of what we do happens on social media. So Which I'm means we need to be even more media. careful with yeah, how we exactly because so. I I, can, I I schedule in yesterday was a great example. I was like, right, about six, six thirty, I'll think of a caption for this post. Got to six six thirty and just the thought of like I wrote one sentence and I literally wanted to check my phone across the room. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I just don't have the mental energy to sit and look at this stupid thing anymore. Well, I think and that's just, what's, did, and yeah. just didn't do it because well, I've, that's I've what's felt like that happening. for a few weeks now post Kelton. I think I've just been acutely aware that there's been such a long period of time where I've just been such a slave to it. I've just needed a bit of a bit yeah, of well, a, I mean, a rundown. Your interaction there is greater than mine because you you have a, a an audience that are, are watching and, and all the rest of it that, that I haven't cultivated, but the. So, so you probably have that, like you said about the YouTube comments earlier on that, you feel that kind of need to interact. But you, you're managing to find a way around that. I think yeah. um, I think for me it's just finding a way, with any habit, uh, and again, the, the habit stuff's really interesting, but with any habit, just saying I'm not going to do that anymore doesn't work. No. There's a kind of a circular pattern to the way habits are formed, and if you can create some kind of crack in that circle somewhere that that uh, that also leads somewhere else and forms a new good habit, then, then you're on to a winner. Um, we can we can elucidate on that on maybe a different podcast because it's really interesting to me how habits are formed and broken and all the rest of it. Because I've done that many times positively, um, but not so much with this one. And I think probably bringing in a different device I, I, I and or even an, an analog clock, just the yeah, classic age old. I, I need yeah. to find a way around that because I do need to get up a good bit earlier than everybody else. So I need to find a way around getting up, making sure that nobody else gets yeah. up with me. Well, part of that, right back to circle, but right back to the very beginning, would be to create a very specific, uh, uh, which I am doing, but a very specific get up time that eventually becomes naturally kind of attuned with my circadian rhythm, and I'm actually waking up without the need for the alarm. That would be ideal. It would be ideal. Uh, yeah. But uh, like I say, four kids don't like that plan. No, no. And again, these are all ideal world scenarios, not things that we hold yeah. ourselves accountable to at all times. Otherwise, we'd be dull, insane people. I think. An interesting podcast for me, though, mate. I've enjoyed it because there, there are things we're both doing. There are things that we both certainly agree on. The things that we know in yeah. amongst this, but there's also kind of ideas. That I hope people listening have got the same kind of uh, and I think probably grasp from it. Just like, oh, I hadn't thought of that, or yeah, I am doing that, but I could do it better, or or maybe which would be interesting for us. They've got a few ideas that are yeah, like, well, I, I do this, and this is excellent, and uh, yeah, please shove it in the comments, DM one of the two of us or whatever, and. and Get in touch and let us know why we're doing things wrong, <laughs> what we could do better, or whether or not any of these kind of habits or ideas have, have helped. Certainly, I, I, think, a few a, I think a good reflection of them um, being with child, ch children, and without children there as well. Because again, the ideal world situation goes even further out the window there. So let, does, let, yeah. let's let's make it abundantly clear that these are these are all things that work for us and we recommend. But they're all things that we're not expecting people to just pick up tomorrow and problem solve. But it's a case of experiment, play around, analyze what works, what doesn't, and then find what works for you. Yeah, yeah. And what works for us is you making sure at this point that you've hit follow or subscribe on the podcast and that you've rated or reviewed the show on whatever platform you're listening on and that you've told all your friends about these 10 incredible habits that are going to change everybody's lives. And you're going to thank us for illuminating such wonderful, enlightening Pretty simple things at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I, please note my sarcasm, but these are all quite simple things that I think are valuable in and of themselves for most people. All, all the concepts are things that you can consider and understand what works best for you around them. So mm. thank you very much for listening, and we will see or hear you. No, you won't hear, we won't hear you, but you will hear us next time. Next time, yeah. Bye. Adios. That's, that's French, by the way. <laughs>